wonderful day at the beach. Spent all afternoon building a sand castle, and I thought I might just take a break and enjoy an ice cream. Well, come and have a look at the sand castle. It's amazing. My sand castle. Where's it gone? I spent ages building that sand castle. I suppose it is only a sand castle after all, not my retirement home. But I do have one question. What makes the tides go in and out? Wind. I don't know. The moon, because um, when it goes around the earth, um, it pulls, it, the gravity pulls on the waves. And when it spins around, it's the gravity and it pulls it. Maybe a big magnet that makes the tide go in and out. The waves? A rope makes the tide go in and out. The wind, because it depends which way the wind is blowing. By the clouds? By the look at the clouds? The wind makes the tide go in and out. Um, I think it's the gravity from the moon when the earth turns around. What if the oceans are like a big bath? Someone leaves the tap on, the water rises, it gets too full. And that would explain high tide. Oh, but what about low tide? OK, if the oceans are like a bathtub, bathtubs have a plug. Someone pulls the plug and the water goes down and that's low tide. Oh, but the water has to go somewhere. Now, I know that high tide happens every 12 hours and low tide happens halfway between every high tide. So if I'm standing here at the water's edge at high tide, then to stand at the water's edge at low tide, I really need to be way out here. Water's edge at low tide. Water's edge at high tide. Water's edge at low tide. And the edge of the water at high tide. Water's edge at low tide. The gravity of the moon is the biggest influence on the Earth's tides. The sun comes into account, but to a much lesser degree. So I'm going to conduct an experiment that simplifies and explains how the tides work. And I need this hoop. This hoop represents the Earth's oceans. That's why it's this lovely oceany colour. And I will be planet Earth. This stick here comes into account as the distance factor. I need to tie this rope rather tightly from the distance factor to the oceans of the Earth because there's going to be some force involved here. There. That should be fine. Now, excuse me. This rope back here represents the moon's gravity. I better make this even tighter because this is where the force really comes in. Okay, the moon's gravity and you play a very important part. You're the moon. So take that rope and move back a bit. There. The earth and its oceans are ready. Now the gravity of the moon draws the water towards it. So pull that rope a little bit. That's right. As the gravity pulls, the water bulges. Can you see the bulge? Now there's some bulging here on the other side of the Earth, but nowhere near as much. That's because of the distance involved. Now, that bulge, that drawing of the water towards the moon, 
creates a high tide. The waters are being drawn, pulled towards it and getting higher. On these sides of the Earth, it's low tide. But the Earth's spin comes into account too. As the Earth spins, it moves into a bulge. The waters are drawn towards the moon and there's a high tide. As the Earth leaves the bulge, it goes into low tide. Then around to another high tide and then into a low tide. And so it continues round and round with two high tides a day and two low tides a day. Well, my sandcastle was completely wiped out because of gravity, the attractive force, which is the major factor in making the tides go in and out. I built my sandcastle at low tide, right? Well, that's when the gravity pull on the oceans was less. So when the tide came in, because the gravity pull was stronger, my castle got wiped out. You know, I've had quite a creative day. Massive great sand castles and boats. Yes, I've become a boat builder. I created this out of bits and pieces that I found on the beach and now it's time to launch this vessel. And the next wave. Go well, boat. Pleasant journeys. Tides coming in. Well, one of my favourite things to do at the beach is wander along and check out the treasures that the tides have brought in. Each new tide brings in new sand and new treasures, taonga. Ah, like these ones here. Look at these. You can use them for arts and crafts, you can give them as gifts, or you can just take them home to your collection. Oh, I collected this too. This would have come in on one of the tides. And maybe these feathers as well. Ah, definitely this seaweed. Oh yes, it's still wet, it's quite fresh. And this stuff is great. Ah, <laughs> depends where it's heading though. You might like to have a wander along the beach yourself. Or something else you could do is make your own tide simulator. To find out how, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Tides Auckland Observatory, PO Box 24180, Royal Oak, Auckland. The helpful people at the observatory will send you an information pack. Oh, and if you want more science information, head to my website. I'm at www.suzy. .co.nz or head to your local library. And thanks for joining me. I'll see you soon. Kakite. And now I think it's time to launch this creation. Go well. Go well. Thanks for paying your broadcasting fee.